So um, I, just to introduce myself a little bit, so um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a speech pathologist and I've been working with head and neck cancer patients for almost 20 years, um, which I'm not sure how that's possible because I'm a teenager, right? Um, so anyway, I uh, have seen the significant improvement in patients' quality of life when lymphedema is managed after head and neck cancer. And when I worked at Johns Hopkins, we had wonderful physical therapists like Julie, an occupational therapist who provided this care. Um, and I was very disheartened when I came to Stanford that we did not have that available. And so I said, okay, well, great, I'll go get trained then. And so this has become a new part of my practice over the past three or so years. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the lymphatic system, what lymphedema is, and how we uh, combat lymphedema. Um, so as a couple of people have alluded to, the lymphatic system um, is part of our immune system, so it's how we process things out of our body. There's a network of different sorts of tissues, so there are tissues that help to absorb fluids to bring those fluids into the lymphatic system. There are structures that transport that lymphatic fluid. And then there are filtration tissues, and those are the tissues that are used to help get things like bacteria and viruses out of our system. So the lymphatic system takes this excessive fluid and moves it back into the circulatory system. And so as Julie mentioned, our lymphatic system is moving in concert with our circulatory system. And so things that we do to stimulate that circulatory system can also have a positive benefit on the lymphatic flow. So let's talk a little bit more about the different parts of the lymphatic system. Um, so in terms of the absorption, we have what are called the lymph capillaries. And these are very thin-walled vessels that are located in the intracellular space. And they are how we get the fluid into the lymphatic vessels. So they're going to absorb that excessive fluid to get that fluid transported. The lymphatic vessels are really interesting because they have these little uh, valves that help to prevent the fluid from going in the wrong direction. And so the lymphatic vessels are trying to move the lymph fluid in a very specific direction. Um, that propulsion is related to the circulatory system at some level. So with that circulatory system, we get some of that lymphatic propulsion. But then things like muscle movement, like Julie was just speaking about, doing things like moving, stretching, those things will also facilitate that um, fluid movement. And like I said, we have these great valves that prevent things from moving in the wrong direction. And then the last part of the lymphatic system, just trying to make this fairly simple, is the filtration point. And these are the lymph nodes. So this is the part of the lymphatic system that probably most people here are most familiar with because many of you probably had cancer in your lymph nodes or had some of your lymph nodes removed or treated with radiation therapy. So the lymphatic node or the lymph nodes will help to filter the fluid and its contents. So that's how we sort of purify and, and clean things out of our um, immune system. If the lymphatic lymph node notes that there's something that's not supposed to be there, it's going to mount that immune response to help process that out. It's going to help to trap and also to hold that foreign matter so it's not spreading in other areas. And that's why sometimes we can get lymph node swelling with infection and illness um, because it's trying to trap that infection from spreading elsewhere in the body. So when we take the lymphatic system at general and then try to bring it down to the head and neck area, um, what you can see here is, it's sort of a strange image, but this is sort of the front of the face here and going around to the back of the neck. And so these little sort of fingers going, those are gonna be our collectors. That's where we're pulling that fluid to down into the lymph nodes through those lymphatic vessels. So the area that we're talking about where most of you have had cancer treatment is a very highly uh, complex network of lymphatics. There's a lot of stuff going on in a fairly small space. So some of you may be thinking, well, what is lymphedema? I don't really even know what we're talking about here. Um, so there's some sort of mechanic insufficiency of the lymphatic system. So instead of that fluid being pulled into the system, processing through the lymphatic vessels, down through the lymph nodes, there's some level of injury to the system. And that can come when the lymph nodes are removed, or it can come when you have radiation in the area where this lymphatic network is. And so what ends up happening is that protein-rich lymphatic fluid, instead of getting pulled back into the circulatory system, it pools up. 
And in the head and neck, most commonly what we see is what we see in this picture here, where we get a lot of what we call submental lymphedema, so underneath here. Sometimes it's very firm, sometimes it's very kind of wobbly looking, and sometimes it'll creep up over onto the face and, and uh, along the face as well. Most of the time, if you're going to get lymphedema, it's going to happen within the first year of treatment. So for people who are 10 years out from treatment, if you haven't had it yet, you're probably not going to develop a new lymphedema at that point. But this is really staggering that 50 to 75% of people who've had head and neck cancer are likely to have some level of lymphedema. And so this is an issue that, like I said, coming here and seeing that we didn't have anybody to manage it, if half to three quarters of our patients may have this problem, we need to be able to provide solutions for it. So then the question is, well, okay, what, what do we do then? How can we treat lymphedema? And so we think about it as being really a complete package. And Julie did a great job of talking about the exercise piece of movement and stimulating with the circulatory system and the lymphatic system. But then there are some other things that we can do to help facilitate um, treating lymphedema. So one is uh, called manual lymphatic drainage, and this is a massage type technique, which I'm gonna show you a little bit more in a moment, that helps to stimulate that lymphatic flow, getting that fluid pulled into the lymphatic system so that it can be processed through the non-injured part of the lymphatic system. Then very commonly what we do is something called compression. So we've stimulated, we've moved the fluid. We don't want the fluid then to just collect back where it started from. And so we'll use compression garments that will hold that area taut so that the fluid can't just come back in and pool in the same area that it was previously. And then when we have that compression on, what we want to do is do our exercises. We want to be doing those stretches that Julie provided. We want to be doing those swallowing exercises that you hear us beat you up about all of the time. It's a great time. You can do two things at once. Your jaw stretches, all of these things. And so adding the exercise in when you have your compression helps you to kill two birds with one stone. Skin care is also very important. So um, particularly if you have something like a neck dissection and you have um, some scar tissue here and the lymphedema is forming just above that scar tissue, you can get infections in that area where there's sort of that little divot in the skin. So keeping the skin really clean and taking good care of the skin is a really important part of lymphedema treatment. We already talked about exercise, and then we can add in other things as needed. We can add in things like scar massage to try to soften those tissues. The earlier we do that after surgery, usually the, you know, not too early, but the earlier we do it after surgery, the more chance we have of helping to break down some of that scar tissue. And then we can use other things like kinesio tape to help provide some stimulation to the lymphatic system as well. So uh, there's not been a lot of research done on lymphedema treatment in head and neck cancer, but in one of the studies that came out of MD Anderson, they found that about 60% of their patients who had come through their lymphedema treatment program had improvement. And the numbers are much better if you do everything that you're asked to do versus if you do part of what you're asked to do. So about 75% of people, if they did all of this stuff, had significant improvement in their lymphedema. If you did some of it, probably more like about half. Um, so this is one of, I always tell people, so much of your cancer care is out of your hands, right? You don't get to decide what your radiation dose is or what chemo or what, how big the surgery is going to be. The cancer dictates that, but you dictate how you're gonna take these rehabilitative strategies to optimize your outcomes and your quality of life. Um, so the more you do, the better your outcomes will be. So what are our goals when we're doing this complete decongestive therapy? Well, some of these goals come from you, specifically. Um, so it may be we want to reduce the volume and the size. If you've got a lot of swelling under here, it's going to be hard to move your neck. It's going to be hard to look in your blind spot when you're driving. And so we want to get that bulk of the edema to go down. And that will then have that impact on mobility um, in that impacted region. We want to look at function. So if you've got a lot of lymphedema here, the structures around your voice box that Dr. Dewan spoke about, where your, your Adam's apple raises up when you swallow to help open the swallow passage, if you have a lot of swelling here, that larynx cannot elevate in that same manner. And so by managing the lymphedema, we're also optimizing that functional piece. Also prevention of a skin infection, um, as I mentioned, is really important. 
a lot of patients who I see for lymphedema will say, it's just uncomfortable. It's not painful, but I just feel a constant sense of pressure here. And so that may be our goal, is to decrease that sense of pressure or fullness where the, where the lymphedema is. For some people, it's purely cosmetic. They look in the mirror and they go, I didn't used to have this turkey wobbler. That's their term, not mine. Um, it's a very technical term, right? But they say, I look in the mirror now and I see this thing and it reminds me every day that I'm a cancer survivor and I don't want that. So for some people, it's, it's the cosmetic piece and that alone is a reason to treat this. And then all of these things together will add up to that piece of thinking about psychological well-being and quality of life. So really all of these different rehabilitations, we're really trying to get people the best quality of life possible. So when I think about um, complete decongestive therapy, we really kind of break it into two phases. So we treat the uh, acute treatment and then sort of the maintenance program. The one positive thing about lymphedema in the head and neck area is that we have gravity working to our benefit. And so we're trying to get those fluids to come downstream. For our patients who, for instance, have breast cancer and have lymphedema in their arm, that arm is down a lot more than it's up, right? We don't walk around like this all the time. And so chronic lymphedema is usually much more of an issue for our patients who have breast cancer because gravity is working against them. But during this acute treatment phase, we want to treat this on a daily basis. This isn't something that we want to do once a week. We really want to do it on a very, very uh, consistent basis. And that's going to include all of those things that I mentioned, the manual lymphatic drainage, the compression, the skin care, and then the exercise piece. And so if we do that every day during the acute phase, hopefully we can minimize whatever those symptom burdens are that are uh, attributed to the lymphedema. In an ideal world, I like for people to come see me once a week, as well as treat at home during this acute treatment phase. It lets me see, how is this responding? Because if you're doing a lot of work and we're not seeing any improvement, we need to do something different, because I don't want to waste your time. But the reality is a lot of people come from distance. And so if you're driving four hours to Stanford, you're probably not going to do that once a week. So we do make concessions. Um, but in an ideal world, we'd have a combination of that home treatment as well as the clinical treatment. Um, Usually what I would recommend is that either the patient or the caregiver or both are trained by the lymphedema therapist on how to manage this. So Dr. Google and YouTube will have all kinds of different videos, but you want somebody who's really looked at your specific anatomy, where your injury is, and help you to kind of customize that home treatment plan so that it's most effective. Um, for most people, we're talking about a treatment period of several months, probably at least about a three to four month period. Some people will have very rapid response and others will take a little bit longer to kind of get through this acute phase. From there, then, we would go into more of a maintenance phase. And for some people, you're going to gradually reduce the frequency of the treatment. So you might not do it every day, maybe you'll do it every other day and you just sort of gradually fade that down. Usually we'd be looking at the lymphatic drainage as well as the compression. And then sometimes you may need a, what I call a little refresher. So I had a woman who had seen me and had been doing a home program and her lymphedema was really well managed and she did great. And then she flew 22 hours to the Philippines and ended up swollen up again because of the altitude and being up there for so long and not moving for so long. And so she went back to her acute treatment, she treated herself for a couple of weeks and it resolved again. So there is this potential for with changes and things that happen in your life, you may have to do a little bit of a refresher course. So what does man manual lymphatic drainage do? So it helps to facilitate that reabsorption. So thinking about those collectors and pre-collectors, we're trying to get that fluid into the lymphatic system so that it can get processed through. It also helps in improving the circulation of the lymphatic fluid. Um, and it also helps to work on decongestion of the areas where we're trying to get the fluid moving. And so lymphatic drainage, manual lymphatic drainage, there's a few different techniques, but in general, what we're talking about is a very light touch massage. Um, the way that I um, suggest people think about it is thinking of it like you've glued your hand to your skin. And so if you take your hand and you sort of glue it to your arm and move your hand, you can see your skin stretching as you're doing that. So it's not gliding over the top, it's not getting deep tissue massage, but it's just moving the skin to help stimulate 
that lymphatic flow. Okay, so that's what we're focusing on. We're also going to focus on a particular directionality of that movement. So we want to move the fluid to certain areas to facilitate that drainage. So it's not just kind of generally moving around on your neck, but we're really going to try to move things towards healthy areas where we can get that fluid to flow. We want to work slowly. So again, it's not doing this really quickly because we're working with something that works with the circulatory system. We have a normal rhythm. If we try to do things too quickly, we overload that system. So you want to think about the movement happening about one time a second so that we're working more in that normal range of the circulatory system. And so in terms of a home program that I do with, um, with many of our patients, we start with what we call decongestion. So we try to get the lymphatic system stimulated and moving in the healthy area before we then move up to treating the area of interest. And so we work over the area, over the collarbone. We work under the armpit, like Julie mentioned, over the rib cage and the chest. And we're moving everything towards those lymph nodes in the armpit, the axillary lymph nodes, because most of us in a head and neck population are not going to have issues with our axillary lymph nodes. Now, if somebody's had a breast cancer diagnosis and they've had surgery for that, and then they get a head and neck cancer, we're gonna to have to adapt that program. And that's where it's really important to not just go and try to figure this out online, but meet with somebody, let us help you figure out what the right treatment is for you. Then what we want to do is we want to look at where that fluid is, and we want to do really focused drainage in that area. So like I said, many, many of my patients, the swelling is going to be really sort of underneath the chin here. So a lot of what we're going to be doing is moving the skin, stretching the skin back towards the ear, so sort of down and back, doing the same sort of thing over the front of the neck where we're going down and back and stimulating in that area. If we have swelling that's creeping up over the jaw or into the face, we want to work the area around the jaw as well. So I always say it's Spock hands, right? So we're going to move down and back again towards the ear. And then if we have swelling on the face, we want to again move that down and back. So this is just a part of the sorts of exercises we might work on depending on where the lymphedema is and, and what we need to do. Um, but just to give you a sense of what that looks like. Then, as I mentioned, we would want to do compression. Thankfully for most people, this is the kind of compression garment we're looking at. So if you don't have a lot of facial swelling, we're usually able to use something where we're really compressing underneath uh, the chin and up over the jaw, as you can see in this garment. So this is what we will commonly give. But if you have swelling on your face, then we may need to do a full face mask where we're compressing all the way along the face as well. The facial garments really require measurement because everybody's face is a little different size and shape. And so if you need a full facial garment, we have to do a full set of measurements to accomplish that. So again, kind of hard to just pick something up off the counter um, or, or order it online and have it really work well for you. Um, skincare, we'll talk about briefly um, because we're going to have a fantastic talk about skincare in just a moment, so I don't need to talk about that too much. Um, but we want to prevent infection in any area where there is lymphedema. So that means cleaning the skin on a regular basis, once or twice a day, using high quality lotions to maintain the moisture of the skin, um, and then also not ignoring signs of infection. So redness, heat, any of those things, especially if they're developing, you know, two months, three months after surgery, that shouldn't happen. And so that's the sort of information that you need to bring back to your care provider to make sure there's not something more serious going on. I have a little concern for one of the people who was supposed to be on our patient panel this afternoon who fell yesterday on her face in a parking lot and has cut up most of her face, and she has pretty significant facial lymphedema. So I need to get on the horn with her on my way home today and check in and make sure she knows to really keep an eye out for um, anything that might go awry there. Um, in exercise, I won't go over this too much because we already got a, a fantastic introduction to exercise, but in general, exercise is going to increase the blood flow, it's going to increase the lymphatic flow, um, and so exercise is good. Like I said earlier, we want to do that exercise when the compression garment's in place. That's going to help you get the most bang for your buck. 
And then in some cases, we may need to go even a little bit further, where we may use what's called a pneumatic compression device. And this is a, a, a image of basically a chest and headpiece that you put on and you attach to a pump, and there are little air chambers throughout the vest and throughout the headpiece that will sequentially inflate and deflate. And that pneumatic compression pump will help to stimulate and circulate the lymphatic fluid. And so this is actually relatively new for head and neck. We've used pneumatic compression pumps for arms and legs for many years, but you can imagine it's a little trickier to do that on the head and neck than it is on an arm or a leg. And so this uh, device has really only been out, I think, for about a year, year and a half now. Um, and we've had some nice, nice outcomes with it with some of our patients. All right, so in conclusion, Damage to the lymphatic system is very common after head and neck cancer treatment. Lymphedema can cause a lot of things like discomfort, issues with function, particularly in regards to swallowing, and concerns regarding appearance and cosmesis. Lymphedema should be managed. We don't want to just ignore it. Sometimes we'll all hear from patients that a provider says, oh, it's not that big of a deal, you don't need to worry about it. But we really don't want to ignore lymphedema. Um, because we want to make sure that we're keeping you comfortable, maintaining um, low risk for infection, and keeping your function in terms of speech, swallowing, and voice good. Um, the complete de decongestive treatment that I mentioned really should be guided by a experienced head and neck lymphedema therapist. So you want to find somebody who's used to working in the head and neck, which is a little bit different than working in the limbs. Um, and then, like I said, the best outcomes are going to happen if you're able to do all of the things that that therapist has recommended that you do. So combining the clinical visits and the home practice and doing it on a regular basis is really important. All right. So. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.